number one wants us to find the area of this isosceles trapezoid. So let's take a look first at the area formula for a trapezoid. So remember that this is where we add the bases together. So base one plus base two. Then we multiply by the height and we divide everything by two. So we have um, both bases here. So let me just highlight those. So we've got the bases, the base is 10 um, and then 15. So we've got that. So the only thing that we don't have is the height. So we're going to need to find um, this height right here. And remember that the height is always perpendicular to the base. So let me just redraw um, this triangle right here so that we can solve for the height. So we've got the height, we've got this kind of portion of the base, and then um, this leg. So we know that this is 40 degrees. Um, so we got to, and we know we need to find this height. So if we take a look at um, this isosceles trapezoid again, um, this piece right here is the same as this. So this little blue chunk is 10. Um, that leaves five left over for these two orange pieces. And since these legs are the same, we know these two pieces are the same. So each of these pieces are 2.5 because that would total our 15 for the base. So we're going to put 2.5 here and then we'll be able to solve um, for this height. And so we've got the 40 degree angle. So this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. So we're going to be doing a tangent function. So we're going to be doing tangent of 40 equals the opposite side h over the adjacent side 2.5 and then we'll multiply that 2.5 up so we're doing 2.5 times the tangent of 40 in our calculator and that will give us a height of um, 2.1 So now we know kind of all of the things for this um, formula. So we're going to add these bases together, multiply by the height, and then divide by 2. So our bases were 10 and 15. And then the height that we just solved for was 2.1. So we'll type that into our calculator, and we'll do 25 times 2.1, which is 52.5 divided by 2. And that gives us an area of 26.25 units squared. Number two, the sun is 62 degrees above the horizon. So that would be um, this angle going up here in this diagram. And it creates a 12 foot long shadow. How tall is this tree? So when we take a look here, um, so we've got this angle, the height is the opposite side, the shadow is the adjacent side. So we again have a tangent function. So tangent of 62 equals the opposite side h over the adjacent side 12. And then we can multiply this 12 up. So we get 12 times the tangent of 62 that we can type in our calculator. And so 12 times the tangent of 62 gives us 22.6 feet for the height of the tree. Number three, a plane leaves the ground at an elevation of six degrees. The plane travels 10 miles horizontally. Let's answer these questions. So um, we've got the ground here. Let me do it green like grass. Okay, so we've got the ground here. And then there's the elevation that the plane is traveling at a six degree angle. And then we want to figure out a couple different things here. So we've got this height that we're looking for. Um, and then we're also going to actually be looking for this blue path. <clears throat> so we know that this angle here 
they told us was six degrees and we know that the path, the horizontal path they've traveled is 10 miles. So the first thing that they're asking is how high is the plane? So that's this segment here for the height above the ground. So this altitude. So if we go ahead and solve for that um, from this six degree angle, the height is the opposite side and this horizontal distance is the adjacent side. So we'll be able to do a tangent function. So tangent of six equals the opposite side H over the adjacent side 10. So we'll multiply that 10 up and we'll get 10 times the tangent of six will give us our height. So the height in this case is gonna be 1.05 miles. Then it wants us to find the distance that the plane has actually traveled. So the plane is um, flying along this blue line. So this is going to be the distance actually traveled. And we know that that is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So you could use the 10 and the 1.05 in the Pythagorean theorem if you would like to. I'm just going to set up a cosine function. So cosine of 6 equals the adjacent side 10 over the hypotenuse d, multiply the d up. So 10 times cosine of six equals 10. And then we'll divide that cosine to both sides. So we're gonna be doing 10 divided by cosine of six. And that gives us an answer of 10.06 miles when we type this into our calculator. Number four, find the missing measures. So we need to find um, side AD, so the hypotenuse, and then we're also gonna have to find um, theta and alpha, the two angles. So let's go ahead and find this hypotenuse first. We know that we've got the other two side lengths, so we're able to do Pythagorean theorem since we see that it's also a right triangle. So AD squared equals 10 squared plus three squared. So AD squared is equal to 100 plus nine. So 109, and then we'll square root both sides and we get the square root of 109 for that segment. Um, you could also type that in your calculator and get a decimal of 10.4. Then we just need to find the angle measures. So if we go ahead and find theta first, so I'm gonna label this three the opposite side since it's directly across from theta, and then the 10 the adjacent side. So I'm gonna do an arc tan function. So arc tan of three the opposite over 10 the adjacent. And then remember that arc tan is also in your calculator as tan negative one. And so we'll type in the tan negative one of three over 10. And that gives us um, that theta equals about 17 degrees. Then to find alpha, remember that these two angles total 90 since we've already used 90 up. So alpha is going to equal 90 minus theta, so 90 minus 17. So alpha is equal to 73 degrees. Number five, in parking, um, in parking garages, the ramps need to be steep, but they have a maximum safe incline of 8.5 degrees. So let's decide if this angle here um, is too steep or if it's safe. So when we're looking at this angle, we need to label the sides. So across from this angle, since we're in a right triangle, across from this angle is the opposite side and next to it is the adjacent side. So in order to figure out this angle, we would do an arc tan, since we have opposite and adjacent, of 20 divided by 100. And when we do that, remember tan negative one in your calculator, we get an angle measure of 11.3 degrees, which is not less than our 8.5.
So then this is not safe. So since this is greater than 8.5 degrees, the ramp is not safe. Number six, select all true equations. So remember that when we have a cosine of an angle, that that equals the sine of 90 minus that angle, because when they're in the same triangle, the sine and cosine of opposite angles are equal to each other. So we're good with A because 37 plus 53 equals 90, and we've got a sine and a cosine. This does not hold true for tangent. So now in C, we've got a sine of 37 and a cosine of 53. Those add to 180, or sorry, add to 90, and we've got a sine and a cosine, so that one's good. Um, D has both sines, so that's not going to be equal unless these numbers are equal. And then E is exactly the formula that I wrote, so these two angles, theta and 90 minus theta, would add to 90, and there's a sine and a cosine, so that one's good as well. Number seven, Claire is flying a kite. Um, she gets tired, so she stakes the kite to the ground. The string of the kite is 30 feet and makes a 27 degree angle with the ground. Let's figure out how high this kite is. So we know that this is 27 degrees. The string is 30 feet, and we want to figure out how high up the kite is. And we know that it's making a 90 degree angle here. So across from this angle is the opposite side. Next to it is the hypotenuse. So we're going to be able to do a sine function here. So sine of 27 equals the opposite side H over the hypotenuse 30. And then we can multiply 30 up. So we get 30 times the sine of 27 will equal H. We'll plug this into our calculator. And when we do 30 times the sine of 27, we end up with 13.6 feet. And then finally, number eight asks us, what is the length of the diagonal of this square? So remember, when we take a square and we split it with the diagonal, we get a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So both of these two smaller angles equal 45. And then the relationship between the leg and the hypotenuse is that they're a scale factor of square root two different from each other. And so the hypotenuse is the longer one. So we'll multiply the leg by the square root of two. So this diagonal equals the four times the square root of two. So you can leave it as four square root two like this, or you could multiply that in your calculator and get about 5.7 units.